16 Wissigan School Board of Directors, please come to order. Mrs. Durkosh, will you please roll call the board? Thank you, Dr. Becker. Mr. Antonio? Here. Mrs. David? Here. Mrs. DiPietro? Here. Mr. Frank? Here. Mrs. Heyman? Mr. Honeycutt? Mr. Stoloff? Here. Mrs. Walsh? Here. Dr. Becker? Here. Seven present, two absent. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Well, welcome all our guests and visitors to our regularly scheduled public board meeting of the Wissickin School District Board of Directors. As a note, the board met in executive session prior to this meeting to discuss matters related to personnel. Next on our agenda is our favorite part, honors, recognitions, and celebrations. Dr. Crisfield. Thank you, and in, we're starting tonight off with a bang. As you see, we have some, uh, some very special guests with us tonight. Um, first off are some of our most favorite and the best students of Wissahickon High School. Hi, everybody. Hi. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for our delicious uh, coffee and tea. Thanks. And then uh, escorting them tonight are two uh, of the most caring and talented teachers you'll find, uh, Ms. Sue Valentine and Ms. Carissa Welch. So I would ask invite them to share a little bit about brewing independence. Thank you. The students are building life skills. That's what this program was designed for. Our functional skills class is on their way to becoming trained baristas, where we're looking for new opportunities to incorporate real life experiences and vocational skills into our daily routine. We started our own business called Brewing Independence. We deliver tea, coffee, hot chocolate, bottled water. Teachers order the beverage through a Google form and then the students fill the orders and deliver them to the various locations throughout the building. We've been invited to special events such as administrative team meetings and now tonight to the board meeting. And the students are going to present the program now and they're going to give you a little insight into what it's like and there's a video or two embedded in it too so that you can see some of them in action. My turn. Teacher order tea and coffee and water and on the Google form. Yes, you can, Okay. They they tell us how many sugar and cream to add. They, they pick the time for delivery, either 8.30 a.m. or 12.30 p.m. and where they want to delivery. Here is the Google form used by teachers to place order. We work in pairs, we share the jobs, we two start the coffee, we set up the coffee station, count the number of cups needed, start the coffee pot, and the with the cups with names and locations. After the coffee is for the cups <laughs> are placed on the car, then we deliver the coffee. We like talking to the teachers and they like talking to us. <laughs> As a regular customer of Brewing Independence, what do you enjoy most about the delivery service? 
Uh, my favorite thing is to see your smiling faces come and deliver my coffee. It's always on time and it tastes great. As a regular customer of Brewing Independence, what do you enjoy most about the delivery service? I, what I enjoy the most is having all my friends from Brewing Independence come in in the morning, wish me a happy day, and, and it gets my day started off the right way. As a regular customer of Brewing Independence, what do you enjoy most about the delivery service? I love a, a fresh cup of coffee in the morning, um, especially seeing all you guys with your bright, shining faces uh, coming in. Um, brings a nice cheer to the morning, you know, for start of the day. Especially love, you know, seeing how happy you guys are when you deliver it. You know, that just makes me makes my day. And right, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Every Friday, a group of us process the payments received from the week before. We deposit the money earned and write out the bills for the current week. We place the new bills in the teacher's mailboxes for payment. Some customers pay in advance, making our job a, a little easier. We are using our profits to reinvest in the business to purchase better equipment and look forward to having Mr. Dixon and the Tech Ed class improve our cart with built-in cup holders. <laughs> Here is a billing receipt sent to, the, to teachers and then used by students to track payments made. Brewing independence lets us practice skills taught in the classroom. We work on functional math, involving banking and money, and functional reading by filling orders and following step-by-step -step directions. Other skills include safety while working with hot beverages, social skills by talking with customers, daily living activities by preparing for after high school, and vocational skills showing us what it is like to have a real job. It is the best way, hands down, for us to be able to get real world experience while building our confidence through teamwork and interactions with others. Thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. much. The kids really work hard at this. It's been a big endeavor this year, but it's something they're going to continue to keep on doing. And you can see they work really hard just getting all the orders right and making everything work. So thank you. Ms. Ballantyne, would you mind introducing our uh, students with us tonight? No, that would be great. At the end, we have William Haggerty. Hi. We are so grateful that you came out this evening. My tea is Perfect. Thank you so much. And the service was, they warned us not to drink, to be careful because it's hot and yes. you're running a great business over there. Thank you. Right. I, uh, I have one question. How much do, does it cost the teachers for the service per week? One dollar. Whoa. Okay. And going along with that, do you have any deadbeats and how do you take care of them? <laughs> does anybody not pay us? Uh, some people pay us. <laughs> I 
I just. One dollar. <laughs> I just wanted to um, I just wanted to thank you guys. You guys did a, a great job with the presentation. You all look so wonderful tonight coming here. Um, and I wanted to ask William and Daniel, how was your swimming? Good. It was good. Awesome. Good. Thank you. It's a little sad that it's our last year. And it's also my last year of track season. This is our last year of our track season. In case you're unaware, I'm a pole vaulter for, <laughs> for the track team. Hi guys, my name is Karen Orkash. I'll play a basketball, bony, golf, and softball. Thank you. Next, we have another favorite part of the meeting, report of the student board representative. Hello, Sarah. Hi. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, so just coming off of spring break, um, I'm gonna be speaking a little bit extemporaneously since we don't have too much news uh, going on here at the district and around the high school. Um, but first off, uh, our jazz bands, or jazz, yeah, jazz bands, um, we have two, went to uh, perform at a competition on the Friday before spring break. And I'm not exactly sure how they placed, but I know that um, they, they usually do extremely well. <laughs> and that I know that they're going to their um, championship uh, competition uh, sometime in May and so I know that they they always put on a great show I used to be involved in that but with so many different things um, I had to stop but I know that they will definitely do an awesome job when championships rolls around also the second thing I have to tell you about tonight is the uh, uh, backyard brawl that will be taking place at the high school which is our um, uh, uh, annual uh, basketball game against Upper Dublin, so I would definitely encourage you to all come out and see that, and I believe that is on Wednesday. Um, and since I don't have really that much to tell you about go, uh, as for goings on tonight, um, Dr. Blair and I thought it would be a good idea just to mix things up a little bit and for me to just talk briefly about what I, as a student, really love about Wissahickon, just because you guys might not get to hear that all the time. And just as a student here at Wissahickon, I think it's important to let you know how much Wissahickon means to me in terms of its nurturing environment. And I'm not, I'm not like trying to fluff or anything. I, I genuinely think Wissahickon is really just the most wonderful environment to learn at. And just seeing the amazing students that we produce every year, it's, it's, we are truly unique in, in terms of uh, the way that our students and our teachers interact and just the environment is so great for students of all levels to just learn and become just amazing people. So I just wanted to thank you all because Wishicken, as much as uh, some of our students may complain, they all know that it's, it's the best place that you could go to school around here and in Pennsylvania. And so we just wanted to, I, I, I guess I can speak for the students and say just thank you so much because it, it, I couldn't be happier to go here.
I, I did one, have one point. The backyard brawl is the teachers of Wissahickon against the teachers of Upper Dublin, correct? Yes. Not the student, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Next, we have public comments. And I have some blue sheets here. Just a reminder that it is the policy of the board not to engage in dialogue or debate during public comments. Please know we are listening and paying attention. And when appropriate, the administration will be posting answers to questions and comments on the website. And that can be found under school board, under school board meeting minutes tab. And with that, I will call Lorraine Smith. Hello, community, colleagues, Dr. Chris Field, Ms. Becker, and the board. I am Lorraine Smith. I'm a 20-year veteran at Wissickon High School, and I teach language arts. And I want to thank you for your service as board members. That is really a great activity that you put yourself out for, showing your commitment and love to our students, to education, and ultimately to the district. Uh, we also share that love, and it is because of that love for students' education and our district that I want to speak in favor of retaining the half days in the schedule at the end of each quarter. Um, first, having that time allows me to sound a grace note to my students who may have gotten behind on work. Now, I know it's been determined that many of us do not input grades in that literal window of 3.5 hours on those afternoons. But um, it gives me a chance to allow students to make up work up to that last time. If I put grades in early, I can still go back in, and it gives a student who maybe has a prolonged illness or perhaps has just gotten behind for certain reasons to have that flexibility. And so I think it's very much in the best interests of students to allow us to have that half day for inputting. Uh, and that maximizes their success. Uh, furthermore, the window gives teachers an all-important chance to collaborate. I teach a core course, 11th grade language arts. In fact, I have Miss um, Walsh's uh, daughter this year, whom I love. I used to teach ninth grade, and then I got Rachel again. So it's really fun to see the progression and the growth in the students. Uh, but uh, because, obviously, as you would understand, if three of us are teaching the same course, then our schedules are scheduled at uh, odds with each other to maximize the amount of courses available to any student. So um, that means that for the entire year, there is no time when the three of us who teach the course can get together except for these three, three and a half hour windows. Uh, and yes, we do have OneNote. That's our Microsoft uh, collaborative tool. And we all love OneNote, and we use OneNote, and OneNote is great. But there is a difference between using something like that and actually collaborating in real time. So for example, I can see that my colleague Steve Mogg might be changing up the intro to a novel. But I can't ask him why. Uh, I can look at Chelsea Montabano's rollout for her research paper. But I can't ask her what worked best, uh, what didn't work, what would you tweak? And I can't share my excitement in not a real-time format. In fact, this is exactly what we're doing right now. Now, we know that John McGowan could set us up with a OneNote and we could all do school board on a computer interactively and enter our information. But there's something that is beautiful about a flesh and blood pedagogical exchange. And I think that we value it. It's ennobling. And ultimately, it's human. And so I really, really value that time with my fellow colleagues. And for that, I ask you again if you would please consider keeping these half days. You see, ultimately, we're professionals, as are you. And I don't see my service to your students as girdled in by the literal constraints of a 7.30 to 3 day. Rather, I juggle all my responsibilities, civic, religious, professional, all the time, 
to just make it work best. So, uh, for example, over the break, I just graded 65 research papers. And yes, it was a big allotment of time. And I don't always do that. But given the fact of the way the break worked and the end of the quarter, it was what made most sense for my students. So I did that. And again, I don't do that every year, but this year it worked well. So, um, um, we're, you know, we are all this way, and we're the ones that, you know, annoy you by asking you to uh, keep those rolls of the toilet paper rolls so that we can have our project. Or we're the ones interrupting you at the family dinner and saying, hey, would you send me the link? Because that's great for my classroom debate. You know, or we're the ones that are really just trying to apply our skills all the time for your students. So, um, and I used to like be the one in the uh, bleachers along with two or three others that would be like doing homework while I was watching my students swim or basketball. So again, we don't see our, our profession as prescribed by a 7.30 to three time. So for example then, if I what I value the collaboration. So if I do my grades early, even if it's on my quote, my time before that window, I will do that because I value the collaboration. But I just ask you to keep it with us. Ultimately, <clears throat> having the afternoon off is also a grace note to all my students, to which as a person are terrific. They are diligent, they work hard, they're, it's the end of a quarter, they've just turned in papers and they've taken tests and it's 11.05 and now they get a chance to go have lunch together and to catch their breath a little bit and many of them probably have for coming back to do extracurriculars. So it's just, it's just a way that we can honor them and their hard work by giving them just a little break. And they truly do appreciate that opportunity for a job well done. Mm -hmm. um, many of you know that Dr. Blair has started the Pay It Forward initiative. And I think this is a way that we can pay it forward to our students and show them how much we appreciate them as well. So let's keep the human element in education. Please reinstate the three half days. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Greg Wild. Taller people need to tell the mic. Good evening, uh, Greg Wild, 103 Medina and Bluebell. Um, contrary to the red, I'm not with WEA. Um, and this, is, this was great. These guys were great today, and, and I know Will and, and, and the Haggerty boys and the others that are involved in the swimming program. They are absolutely awesome. They add so much to the team and, and, and the competition and the camaraderie and, and what they do there. Uh, I had one thing I wanted to, to inquire about, and uh, knowing that this isn't a dialogue, if I'm at the wrong place, I know someone will tell me at least that. It has to do with the athletic task, task force. Um, I've been aware of its existence. I've heard little bits and pieces. Um, I've talked to a number of people and no one has heard much of anything about meetings, agendas, um, what it's doing, uh, what, it's, what it's accomplished. There don't seem to be meeting minutes around anywhere, uh, next steps, or anything else like that. And I don't know if that's a board thing or if that's Dr. Chrisfield's um, um, project or what it is, but um, I, representing at least some people in the community, seem to be in the dark as to what's going on with that group and it would be helpful if we knew what was going on. I'm not just interested in swimming. Um, former football, lacrosse, basketball player, I'm in, I'm in it for all the kids, regardless of what activity, whether it be athletic, band, or, or what have you, and would like to know what's going on with that. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Patricia Fitzgerald. move it down for the short person. Good evening, board members and community members. My name is Patricia Fitzgerald, and I am a second grade teacher at Stony Creek Elementary. I am here to speak on behalf of the elementary school faculty and the voice our collective concerns about the 2016-2017 calendar, specifically the time that was removed that teachers need for report card preparation. In the past, there was a half day at the end of each trimester 
that was designated for report card completion. This time was critical and necessary for elementary teachers. The elementary report card has many indicators that must be addressed. The amount of data that needs to be considered for the report card is cumbersome. It requires a large dedicated amount of time and space to complete a comprehensive report card. It is not something best done in limited increments. As you are aware, it is imperative that teachers have data to justify each of the report card grades. The early dismissal days was and is critical to working towards that goal. It is in the best interest of the district, Wissahickon families, and Wissahickon students to protect those half days as uninterrupted time to reflect upon the data used to complete this important legal document. In the past, those half days were used to collaborate with other colleagues who were pertinent to the individual evaluation of each student. Classroom teachers need the opportunity to compare data with colleagues. Some of these colleagues are reading specialists, learning support teachers, speech and language specialists, guidance counselors, special area teachers, gifted teachers, and our own teammates to make sure that we are all interpreting the rubrics and data, and data consistently. This process takes time. This time also allowed us to prepare documentation to share during parent conferences. It is our understanding that you may think that teachers do not utilize this time. In the past several years, it has been either implied or explicitly stated by some administrators that report cards should be completed before the grading window closed. Perhaps this factor made it appear that teachers did not utilize this uninterrupted time. I can assure you the elementary report card is so involved that it requires many more hours than the allotted 3.5 that the half day had provided. We kindly and emphatically ask the board to recognize the amount of time needed to effectively complete report cards and to put those early dismissal days back where they belong in the 2016-2017 calendar. In closing, I would like to reiterate that report cards require much more attention, time, and space that can be provided by professional periods or planning and preparation periods interspersed throughout the weeks. The calendar has been changed after board approval in the past. We ask that this crucial issue be changed in the 2016-2017 calendar. We thank you for your time and consideration concerning this matter, and we ask the board to quickly resolve the issue and reinstate early dismissal days back before it compromises the validity of the elementary report card. Thank you. Thank you very much. M moving forward, we have report of the secretary, Mr. Coleman. Thank you very much. Uh, we present for approval the March 14, 2016 meeting minutes. Second. The motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any corrections to the minutes? And all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Thank you. And the next is just the next meeting dates, which are April 25th and May 9th, 2016, 730 in the administrative offices. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Coleman. Now we report of the treasurer, Mr. Coleman. Thank you. Um, we present for acceptance and minuting the treasurer's report for February 2016 per document A1. Second. The motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any comments or questions? Not all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Thank you, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Coleman. Next we have a report of the board president, which is me. And the topic of my report this evening is the selection of a board solicitor. Um, for all those at the table and listening, um, I would like to provide a brief history of the steps that have taken place in this process. To begin with, a request, a request for proposal for legal services was drafted and reviewed this past January. 
This RFP was advertised in two newspapers and was also posted on the district website. Six proposals were received. A committee reviewed these responses and selected four firms based on many factors, including school district law experience, fees, proximity to the district, and the general information provided in the proposals. On March 5th, at a publicly advertised board retreat, the four firms, which are Fox Rothschild, Whistler Perlstein, Rudolph Clark, and Timothy Knox were interviewed. The board discussed the responses and the impressions of the firms. Follow-up questions were requested of the firms regarding their fee structures. Tonight, our goal as a board is to, is to give some direction. Um, let me say that sentence again. Tonight, the goal is to receive direction from the board to develop a contract with one of the firms for approval at the April 25th meeting. So here's the plan. I would like to open it up for discussion to board members. Once discussion is complete, a board member will need to bring forward the motion to authorize a contract with a selected solicitor. After it is moved and seconded, the board will then vote on that solicitor. If five votes are counted, then the selection process is complete. Oh, um, pardon me, because we have two out this evening, sorry. If four votes are received, then the selection process is complete. If not, we will need another motion for another solicitor. Uh, is this clear to everybody? Right, and so now I would open up, open the discussion up if anyone has anything they'd like to contribute. Well, I guess I'll start off. Um, I just wanted to thank uh, all the solicitors that came out to our board retreat and gave their presentations. Um, they were very thorough, they were concise, they were informative. Um, I personally have one that I'm leaning more towards, uh, but I think with what we narrowed it down to, I think whichever one we choose will be a very good firm and represent the district very well. Um, and that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Mrs. Walsh. Are there any other comments? I would like to echo and express my appreciation to all the firms for coming out and speaking with us. Um, I would just like to add a comment that um, although we, this is the first time I think that the board has done an RFP for a new solicitor for quite some time, I think for probably two decades plus, over 20 years, uh, Timothy Knox, um, and more recently Scott Wolport from Timothy Knox has represented the firm as a solicitor. And I just wanted to express kind of I think the consensus of the board that our move to solicit RFPs for legal services was not um, in any way meant to be a knock against Timothy Knox or like that we had dissatisfaction. I think it was just the mere fact that it had been literally like decades since we'd actually tested the marketplace to see um, what some of our options were. And I think we were uh, fortunate in getting six solid proposals. We had four uh, very good firms who came to present to us and took a portion of their Saturday to do so. Um, and as Ms. Walsh, Walsh said and uh, Mrs. Becker, Ecker, Dr. Becker echoed, um, the four firms that we did see all uh, looked very solid. I think in the end, as a, as a board, we kind of narrowed it down among those four to two, uh, Fox Rothschild and Whistler Perlstein as amongst the four, I think that seemed to, for many board members at the time, um, seem to kind of differentiate them, themselves of the four. Between the two, I think both very so strong firms and um, depending on which way we go, I mean, I could be happy with either one. I mean, I think there's some personal preference um, for one versus the other, but I think in terms of overall qualifications, either of those firms would, um, would be a good choice for the district to work out well. Thank you. Any other comments? Is there a board member that would like to bring forward a motion or a solicitor? Yes, I'd like to make a motion. And the motion will be to authorize the administration to develop a contract with Fox Rothschild as solicitor for the time period uh, July 1st, 2016 to July 30, 2017 per document one. This is to develop a contract. Second. Um, the motion has been moved and seconded. I know we already had discussion, but it, is there 
any other discussion? Okay, with that, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, please say no. Yes, that motion passes. Thank you. Next, we have report of the superintendent, Dr. Chrisfield. Thank you, and, and the only report tonight is I'm reporting it's going to be a privilege to uh, walk over to the high school tomorrow and say hello to my friends in uh, that class and thank them for this, uh, this really, not just the beverages, but also the enthusiasm that they bring to that school every day. They're a credit in every way. Thank you, and there is no report of the solicitor this evening, so moving forward, a report on committee meetings. Communications committee, Mr. Antonio. Uh, no report this evening. Curriculum and technology, Mrs. Heyman, who unfortunately is not here this evening. Facilities and transportation, Mrs. Walsh. The Facilities and Transportation Committee will meet on October, or not October, April 4th, 2016 at 5.30 p.m. in the administrative offices. And yes, we're going to go back to curriculum and technology, and Mrs. Walsh is going to read the next meeting date. Uh, the Curriculum Technology Committee met on March 17th at 12 p.m. in the administrative offices. The Curriculum Technology Committee will meet on March 29th, which is tomorrow at 5.30 in the Wissahickon High School Audion. The purpose of the meeting is to review the proposed middle school schedule. All are welcome and encouraged to come. Thank you. Next is the Finance Committee, Mr. Honeycutt, who also is not here this evening. The Finance Committee will meet on April 4th, 2016 at 6.30 p.m. in the Administrative Offices. IU Legislative Committee, Mr. Stoloff. Yes, the IU Legislative Committee met on March 16th at 7.30 at the Intermediate Unit in Norristown. And the session concentrated on two items, uh, the then stalemate in Harrisburg, and uh, number two was a visitor from uh, the Philadelphia Charter uh, Office which gave us a worst case scenario of what charters and the lack of uh, state regulations of charters, uh, how that affects the Philadelphia School District. And uh, as many of you are aware, there was a, a partial solution of the state budget, but uh, that was last year's budget. Nothing as uh, they haven't even started on next year's budget yet. So stay tuned. And the uh, next uh, meeting of the IU uh, Legislative Committee will be May 18th at 7.30 p.m. at the Intermediate Unit again in Harrisburg. Next, we have IU Board of Directors, which is me. The IU Board of Directors met March 23rd, 2016 at 7 p.m. at the Intermediate Unit. It was business as usual. Um, however, I do want to let everyone know that on May 9th, they are having an annual golf classic fundraiser for the foundation. So if there are any golfers out there, it's sure to be a great event. And the next meeting is April 27th, 2016 at 7 p.m. at the Intermediate Unit. Next, we have North Monco Technical Career Center. Mr. Stoloff? Yes, uh, the Joint Operating Committee met on March 21st at 7.30 p.m. at uh, North Monco, where the biggest item was a vote on contracts for a new roof at the school. And the uh, next meeting will be on April 18th at 7 p.m. again at North Monco. Mr. Stoloff, we can't get enough of you. Next we have right. Policy Committee, Mr. Stoloff. There is no escape. <laughs> All right, the Policy Committee met on March 16th at 5.30 uh, in the administration offices, and there were several uh, items. One is uh, you will, uh, these uh, policies will be uh, shared with you in a moment. One was over uh, non-resident students. The purpose is to both ensure that only students who live in the district are in our schools, 
and to ease the uh, move into the district by students whose family are moving here and also to uh, reduce the disruption to the students who are, whose families are moving out of the district. And also, uh, there was the, uh, the provision of uh, having the, uh, the, the emergency drug, and I hope I pronounce it right, uh, naloxone, uh, which is to assist anyone on school property who uh, might suffer from an opioid uh, overdose, which is a very uh, severe problem, obviously. It uh, cause, can cause death. And uh, then uh, another policy is to uh, treat our staff as professionals, uh, as they are, by offering simple beverages and food when the mooding, uh, meetings take place during eating times. And uh, a third is student activity fees. The idea behind this is to increase the participation by students, uh, regardless of financial resources, as part of our drive to eliminate the achievement gap by increasing a uh, buy-in uh, by all students. This will be studied over the next three years to see if this is actually the result. Okay, so I would like to now make some uh, motions here. Uh, the first motion is to uh, uh, the approval of the uh, first uh, a recommendation for approval of the first reading on the enrollment of non-resident students and Noxalone policies. I'm not quite sure why they are combined. And that is uh, documents B1 and B2. So moved. Second. The motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any comments or questions? And all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Okay. Uh, next is a recommendation for approval of a second and final reading on food and beverage expenditures and revenue assess, uh, assessment appeals policies. Uh, uh, one point, uh, the idea that uh, I didn't uh, discuss this uh, in my little rundown. This is uh, if the... Uh, values of a property go up, we have the, uh, the right to, uh, to seek an increase in uh, assessment so that uh, everyone in our district pays a, uh, a reasonable and responsible uh, tax towards the support of our district. And uh, these two uh, will be in approval of a second and fi uh, final reading for the food and beverage expenditure and reverse assessment appeals policies as per documents B3 and 4. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. The motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any comments or questions? Not all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, please say no. Motion passes. And next, since we have a new food and beverage policy, we must discard the old one. And that is a, a approval of the, uh, for the deletion of the old food and beverage expenditure policy. So moved. Second. And that is uh, document B5. Motions have been moved and seconded. Are there any comments or questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, please say no. Motion passes. And finally, the policy committee will meet again on April 20th at 5.30 p.m. in the administration offices, and I certainly hope this is the last you'll hear from me tonight. Well, Mr. Stoloff, I don't believe it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, we still, I believe, need to go over the second and final reading of the deletion of the student activity fee. Aha, you have not escaped. Okay, and uh, that is the approval of the second and final reading for the deletion of student activity uh, policy and guidelines, <clears throat> effective July 1st, uh, 2016, per, per document B-5. So moved. Second. The motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any comments or concerns? Um, a few clarifying questions. Um, how, how long has the student activity fees policy been in place? I mean, uh, as, as written. Or roughly, I mean, it's not, it's been around for a while, I'm guessing. 
and I also I seem to recall I think might have been at a finance committee meeting where this might have come up um, annually the amount of amount of dollars that we um, get from student activity fees is I think in the neighborhood of sixty thousand dollars is that correct it appears it's been in place best we can tell two thousand seven and sixty three thousand sixty three thousand um, and what evidence do we have that would lead us to believe that it serves as a barrier for um, uh, folks participating in extracurricular or co-curricular activity? Um, at this point, we, we don't have evidence. It's a theory that we're gonna, we would like to try to test, and as a, perhaps it's more like a hypothesis. Um, what we do know is we, we have anecdotally observed students who appear not to be engaged. It's really uh, like an engagement gap, and we believe that one possible reason for that is the fact that it costs fifty dollars to do something, and um, I think one of the key outcomes of this and our discussions in policy is that we need to develop some some baseline data, which we're doing right now, and then we need to measure, uh, say, two three years time, whether or not engagement has increased. Now that won't tell us if removing this fee is the cause. It won't be a causal uh, finding, but it could be a correlation, or at least it could be something good. If we find out that <coughs> engagement hasn't increased at all, even after removing this fee, then we should revisit this decision in two years' time. Um, I guess what, what gives me pause regarding this policy is, uh, and it wasn't until I kind of you know, let it percolate a little while, is that um, we know that uh, this budget cycle and looking forward, that we have a lot of challenges as a district. Um, we have a structural deficit that we need to try to figure out how to address. Um, and let alone the structural deficit, we have capital needs that are kind of long overdue and that we need to build capacity to be able to, to deal with. Um, that um, eliminating this or changing this policy, in essence, will eliminate $63,000 from next year's budget and going forward. Um, and that's money that we'll need to figure out how to make up or absorb somewhere else. Um, and it adds pressure to pressure we're already feeling um, with the current budget. Um, and given the fact that we don't have really a strong evidence, and it's really sort of anecdotal or a gut feel that this may help engagement, this doesn't feel like this is the smartest thing for us to do at this point. Um, if there are a handful of students, maybe a small number of students who we believe uh, this serves as a barrier, there might be more targeted interventions that we could apply to try to remove that barrier, then eliminating kind of broad brush the entire program which has been in place for I guess almost 10 years now. And I haven't heard a lot of uproar about it. I think it's kind of normal. I mean, if there are students who participate in this, these activities and paying a little bit extra because it's an additional cost that not everyone has um, seems fair and it's somewhat normalized in the district, that um, to eliminate it, um, you know, sort of on a gut feel, given all the, all the challenges we're dealing with um, budget and finance wise, um, seems kind of premature to me. But, you know, I'm only one person, and I'd like to hear thoughts from other board members. Excuse me. Uh, can I speak on that? Um, we've had a, uh, a waiver for any, uh, any student who came forward and said we, uh, the kid would actually have to go to his counselor or some other uh, administrator and say explicitly, I am too poor. I cannot afford to uh, participate in sports. To expect that of a student, especially a high school student or an elementary or a middle school student, uh, is really, really pushing it. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's hard enough to get students to fill in a lunchroom uh, waiver so that they can get a free lunch even when they're uh, entitled to it. And I think there is a, uh, we want every student who is interested in taking a, a part in any extracurricular activity. We're not just talking football, but anything, uh, in, uh, whether it be the chorus, the band, or whatever. And uh, it's, uh, it's uh, less than $65,000, and uh, we're, uh, we have a budget that's uh, in the region of $90 million. And uh, not that 65000 63000 is not a lot of money, but I think uh, our job is to educate uh, our students, all of our students, and to, get, uh, to take them from where they are to where we know they need to be. And I think, uh, let us try this experiment. 
see whether it does increase the, uh, the participation in, uh, in our at-risk students, and uh, let's see what happens. I have something that I wanted to add to that, too. Um, as Mr. Stoloff was stating, the waiver uh, that is there, first the parent would have to fill it out, and then the student would bring it in, or the parent would bring it in, either one, but um, it takes a lot for them to do that. That's a big embarrassment for some people, and they would rather their kid not participate than have either that feeling on themselves or just not wanting that embarrassment. Um, and the $50 that we're getting, we have to remember where that's coming from. That's coming from the people that are already paying tax for the district. We're asking them, the taxpayer, to pay another $50 for their to be able to participate in something that they're already paying the taxes for for them to participate in. So it's an additional tax, basically, on certain parents of students that want to do some extracurriculars. Um, and personally, I, I don't think that we should put our students in the position where they're embarrassed, they just don't do it, and then they have to act cool. Well, I don't play this sport because I don't want to play it when really they do want to play. I would just add one, my feeling about it, and I certainly am sensitive you know, to your comments regarding the finances involved, but I believe that these extracurricular activities are just as important a part of the curriculum as the academics, and I don't think there should be an additional fee to participate. I think it should be part of what, what you get. It's the whole package. I was here when the $50 fee, I'm dating myself, came into place, and um, there was a large ruckus in the community, and there was, you know, a lot, a lot of outspoken people. And if we take this out of the budget, I'm not optimistic. If it doesn't work, we'll ever be able to get it back in the budget. Um, no matter what, the taxpayers, if we take it out, the taxpayers are going to be paying the sixty-five thousand dollars, and that's what it is. It's item six seven four zero. In next year's budget, it's sixty-five thousand dollars, which means that there are thirteen hundred students paying this fee. So I'm wondering, this smaller number of students that aren't paying the fee, who are they, and do we know that these are the students that are in the achievement gap? I mean, we don't know why these these students aren't paying the fee. We can assume it's because of their financial need, but we really don't know. Um, I would like to suggest that we put off this vote until we have a little bit more information and as we get deeper into the budget, because though it is a $90 million budget, our major impact items are in the 20000 to 28000 mark, so this is three times the price of a major impact item. So maybe we could put it on the major impact list and thoughtfully figure this out. That's just my suggestion. And what I would also add is that um, the goal, I think, underlying this whole suggestion or change to policy is to increase barriers to engagement. Um, it's not to get rid of the student activities fee. There's a belief that the student activities fee may represent that barrier. But the, again, the goal is to increase student engagement in extracurriculars or eliminate barriers for it. And what I'm suggesting is that there are more targeted interventions to be able to address that and increase that engagement that aren't broad brush a blunt tool eliminate a fee that's been in place for approaching 10 years is a chunk of income that's structurally part of our our uh, budget and as dr becker said once we remove it it's unlikely it's going to come back in so and again i think with the goal being to increase engagement or eliminate barriers to engagement there are other approaches we can try first that don't require us to cut out a steady and significant source of, uh, of revenue for the district, at least not at this stage. Uh, if I can make one other comment, uh, there is a, there's a basic inequity built into the fee at its base. Uh, a student pays $50 whether they're involved in one, two, five, or 20 activities. And uh, 
and there are some activities that cost actually nothing, uh, like the chess club. I mean, I'm, I'm, sh uh, I'm sure all the kids have to do is turn on the uh, a computer or pull out a, a chess set that might be 150 years old and there's no expenditure uh, to the school board. Uh, and th that student has to pay the same fee as someone who is on the football team, which is probably the most expensive uh, extracurricular activity. So uh, I, I think there's a, a, a basic inequality and inequity that's built into this fee. And if anything, if you want to continue the fee, I think it, uh, it should be changed to a cost basis. And let's make those football kids pay what it really costs us. And uh, if we're worried about every single dime that, uh, that we have in the district, as I said, our job is to educate our students. And uh, it affects, okay, there may be 10, 15 students in our district. That's 10 or 15 lives. I just have a question. I, I, was it the My suggestion was that we suspend it if we thought it would help. I was not a fan of completely removing it because as Dr. Brecker said, I don't believe we would get it back. I thought that when we were talking about this, it had to do with defraying the cost of the activity bus also. So was that wrong? The, um, the, the money goes into the general fund, so we can defray any one of the many costs that we have, including we do provide an activity bus. So given that there was quite a bit of discussion this evening, I'm just throwing it out there. Would anyone, if someone were to make a motion like me, to put off this vote until we're deeper into the budget season? The term is postponed indefinitely, but that's not what I mean, though. It is? OK. To postpone indefinitely this motion until we have a little bit more information. And I would second that. So I guess I'm now going to, so we're done. All right, so all those in favor say aye. 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 Are we clear? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. No. Mrs. Durkosh, will you please roll call the board? Mr. Antonio? Aye. Mrs. David? No. Mrs. DiPietro? Aye. Mr. Mr. Frank? Aye. Mr. Stoloff? No. Mrs. Walsh? No. Dr. Becker? Aye. Four yes, three no. Motion carries. Thank you, everybody, for the discussion. Next, we have committee meeting minutes. I am looking for a motion for approval of the March 7th facilities and transportation, March 7th finance, March 16th policy, and March 17th curriculum technology committee meetings per documents B6 through B9. The motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any comments or questions? Not all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Next, we have report on personnel. Mrs. Rossi. Thank you, Dr. Becker. I'd like to request approval of motions A, B, and C per document C1 through C3. These motions include a resignation and a request for leave of absence under the FMLA um, leave, of, uh, leave Act and also additions to the volunteer list and professional subs. Second. The motions have been moved and seconded. Are there any comments or questions? Not all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, please say no. <coughs> Motion passes. Thank you. 
Next report on student and instructional activities, Mr. Abamont. Thank you, Dr. Becker. I'm requesting approval of motions 12A as per document D1. Document D1 is a request for approval of tuition contract between Wissick and School District and a private provider. Second. The motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any comments or questions? Not all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Next, we report on plant and equipment. Mr. Coleman. Thank you very much. We uh, present for approval motions A, B, C for documents E1 through E2, uh, which include the um, discarding and excess obsolete equipment, uh, the uh, replacement of flooring and refurbishing of the floor at the middle school, uh, which, by the way, at the facilities meeting we discussed, we did receive an insurance check for approximately 21000 uh, to offset that cost and the loaning of uh, 20 obsoleted netbooks to North Bend uh, Boys and Girls Club for their uh, purposes. Thank you. Second. The motions have been moved and seconded. Are there any comments or questions? Yes, I'm uh, very happy to uh, see that our netbooks, which haven't been used, I think, for a, a year or so, are going to find a, a home and uh, so that uh, students in our community can uh, can use them on the uh, uh, for any activities. Uh, for many years, I've been a volunteer at a place in Philadelphia that recycles uh, computers and uh, gives them or sells them at low cost to community people. And uh, I know how valuable a computer is where there is none at home. And I think this is a, a great use of our, uh, an unused resource. Thank you. Okay, with that, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Report on finance, Mr. Coleman. Uh, thank you very much. Um, rest, request approval of motion A per document F1, which is the uh, bill list. So moved. Second. The motion has been moved and seconded. Any comments, questions? Yes, I have comments. I'm abstaining from voting from this motion due to my employment with an involved vendor. I will submit this abstention in writing. Thank you, Mrs. Walsh. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Thank you. The next motion is a request for uh, approval of motions B, C, and D per documents F2 and uh, through F4, including uh, the financial reports, a waiver of the fee for the uh, Cancer Relay for uh, Life um, program, which is ho hopefully going to occur May 13th and 14th, and a stipulation and order settlement, which um, is an assessment appeal um, that has been presented to the board. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, please say no. Thank you very much. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Coleman. Uh, next on the agenda are public comments. Christine De Laurentiis. Good evening. My name is Christine De Laurentiis. I'm in Ambler. Um, I just wanted to make a, a small comment as you're continuing to think about the activities fee and the impact that it has on our students that cannot pay. Um, for many years, my daughter attended Madison Avenue Elementary School, and that, that school had a large number of students that were qualifying for free or reduced lunch. Um, not every student that comes to this school qualifies for free or reduced lunch or has the money to pay $50. They don't just fall into two buckets. There's a very large amount of people in between there that might not qualify but might not also have that extra $50. Additionally, in my experience 
with the Home and School Association at Madison, we tried very, very hard to make sure that any activity was either free or extremely low cost so that we purposely did not put a family in the position to have to make a decision whether or not they could attend or they didn't have to go and ask someone, can we get in for free? They could easily just attend because it was either free for everyone or it was low cost enough, $5 for an entire family, that they could say, okay, yeah, we can do that. It's important to make these considerations not only for those that you want to save the embarrassment of having to ask, but also for all of those that wouldn't qualify but still cannot put it in their budget. It's a very important consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Any board comments? I just have one. Sorry. I'm going to uh, build off of what Ms. De Laurentiis was saying um, and what I was talking about earlier about the taxpayers paying, that we are taxpayers that are paying this $50 fee. So in essence, when you have this fee and it's directed to one person in particular, that person's paying $50. But if you spread that out through the whole tax base, it basically would be I don't know, cents to each taxpayer as opposed to putting the burden of $50 on one family in particular that maybe couldn't afford it. Okay, and I have an, uh, a possible correction. I'm not sure, thinking back when I was talking about this, I'm not sure if I said inequity or iniquity. Obviously, I meant inequity. All we have done is put the decision off so that we can gather some more information to make sure that the decision that we make is the right decision. So I appreciate everybody's comments, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to gather the information. Any other board comments? Okay. Can I have a recommendation for approval to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes.